Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and I'm going to be showing you briefly, shortly, hold, hold, uh, one of my map makers. The reason I wanted to share this tool with you is because CA recently announced that they're going to be finally getting back to the assembly kit with some updates. So we all know that they had announced with big fanfare the mod tool kit for Attila. However, right off the bat, it kind of fell flat on its face and had a bunch of issues. People couldn't even use certain portions of it. So finally, CA is coming back to address some of it. Darren here making a post regarding all the things that they're going to be trying to do. It's rather minor for now, but they're definitely um, asking for people to submit requests for different things that you'd like them to implement. Uh, so this is a big step. I was you know, almost thinking it was be going to be abandoned. You had Doom on 15 and other people in the forums posting all sorts of stuff about, you know, we really need to get this, this, and this fixed. So kudos to these guys for taking the initiative and really bringing it to CA's attention because this is something that held great promise and that is going to be crucial for CA to fix. So thank God they're getting back to um, dealing with this because it allowed people to make more um, awesome mods, not only just for standalone mods that you would do for single player, but also multiplayer, which I'm going to be discussing soon. Uh, before we get into that, I wanted to at least shed light on a comment that Dogvert posted on the, the subreddit, um, Total War, uh, that was talking about this, where basically he wanted to clear the air and say, you know, we support modding as much as possible, despite people saying conspiracy theories uh, for why they might hold back modding for the purpose of DLC. He says that they've put a lot of support in this in the past, so I just wanted to show this viewpoint. They have mod summits, they have they give out early access DLC to modders just to make sure that they don't break the mod. So I uh, just wanted to put Dogbird's viewpoint in there. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and share the Photoshop tool that I created with you guys. So here you go. Alright, so this is going to be the template that I've provided for you guys. So it's very simple, even if you don't know Photoshop, this should be easy to pick up for anyone. So. From the get-go, you're going to see a bunch of these different folders. The one you're going to want to work on is going to be the base template folder. The rest are examples of things I've created. So the way this works is you have a bunch of different layers, and you're just going to be playing with the visibility of each. So you're going to want to start off with these two at the bottom, the water base. Press the I to turn it on or off. And then the grass base there. So for this um, demonstration, we're just going to start with the grass base. Then what you're going to do to sort of add on to this is a bunch of these layers that all have a mask applied to them. You can then start essentially painting on the texture of that layer by clicking on the mask, pressing B for brush, and then making sure you're on white to reveal that layer. So you can reveal a bunch of different textures. The first is going to be a water texture. Then you have two different grass textures representing hills of various elevation. Dirt texture for a path. Dirt texture rough tree texture, rocky texture, and those are the main things right there. So let's start and let's just create a map. This is just to show how quickly you can create an idea. So water texture here, I'm going to make sure I click on the mask. I'm going to start painting, making sure my opacity is at 100 in this case. So let's pretend we're going to be designing uh, a more interesting river map than what CA has. So you can see here, I'm starting to paint the layer. The brush goes through here, and I'm revealing this um, river. Um, so let's say maybe we're going to have, you know, we want to create a couple rivers, something here, um, and then maybe it starts to, to branch out uh, into a couple little tributaries, and then it gets a bit marshy. If you want to make it marshy, so I have a blending of the two textures, you can go ahead down to an opacity of 50 maybe, and then what you can start to do is paint out with the larger brush. You can see right through there, start to reveal a little bit of that, and that's going to allow you to give the idea and the impression that you are dealing with some sort of marshy terrain right there. The more you paint over an area, the more um, you know it is going to be revealed. So it starts off at 50% opacity, but then of course you can make it more. So you know this is good to show shallow water or what have you. The next layer, like I said, is going to be these hill textures. So now let's pretend I wanted to create a hill. So again, going back to my paintbrush, I'm going to make sure at 100% opacity. Now I'm going to paint some hills. So perhaps overlooking this area, there's going to be some hills. So there, I've already perfect, um, you know put in some shade effects and some um, highlights to this layer so you can obviously tell this is supposed to be high ground so we've got a couple of key areas a ridge perhaps overlooking this this position here again with the high opacity you can see that this is pretty stark and it stands out a lot so maybe that's what you want to do at first as you're building out your your cliffs and your ridges so this is going to be perhaps a little bit more interesting here but if you want to blend it a bit with the ground, again, go back to an opacity that's something like 50. And then you can start painting here, which will give it, you know, it'll start to break up the form of your cliff. So that'll allow you to show which areas are uh, perhaps more steep, which ones aren't. So that's pretty easy. I can join these two right through there. And then here, perhaps the back side, I want to start evening out. I can even go down to an opacity of 20. You hit that quickly by clicking 2, 
and there you have it. So starting to add some 3D to your map. Now I have a second hill layer that's positioned above the previous one in case you wanted to go ahead and show that, you know, here there's an even taller cliff. So um, just to show different levels, um, again, works similar to the base layer under it, but you can jump straight to having a, a higher hill. Um, so there you have it. The next one is going to be the dirt path. So with this one I recommend probably working at an opacity of 70, something like that with a smaller brush. So here is where you want to start to give character to your map. You can say, okay, you know, just to, to give direction, I'm going to flesh out a bit of the travel routes. There you go, you have a path here. Uh, and maybe if you want to indicate, you know, an alternate route that comes through here, this is where you can turn down the opacity and start painting over areas of the water. So it still stays blue, but you can show that, hey, you know, I want this to be a uh, navigable, navigable part of the river. You can also, you know, start painting a bit on the sides of the river to make it more realistic. Pretend that there's, you know, shallow water and beaches and whatnot. So all of a sudden you start adding more character, and this is a way to convey to people kind of, um, you know, where you want the um, troop flow to be going. So there you go. I have my paths. There's also going to be a dirt texture rough, which is in case you want to have uh, an indication that the terrain should be a little steeper. There's a little more going on. So again, same opacity technique. I'm painting up on those areas. Here, maybe at this little um, choke point, I want it to be um, rocky. I want you know some of this terrain to be a little bit steeper and more impassable. Backside of these cliffs. Um, start to add a little bit more of the rocky terrain looking nice uh, and then actually I'm going to jump up ahead to this rocky texture here this is going to be even more rocky so if you want to do some mountains there you go you can easily combine and overlay these textures so there you can see clearly that's supposed to be impassable this is going to be an important texture if you want to paint the backside of a cliff to clearly indicate that you don't want you know uh, troops to be passing over one side of the cliff that's going to be important um, in terms of accessibility here along the water's edge I'm gonna make um, you know overlooking cliffs to this little narrow pass here um, and there you have it uh, and let's pretend I make a mistake right through here what you can just do is change the opacity of your layer uh, sorry the color of your layer go back to black that will mask whatever you did so you can go back in and edit all of this uh, on a whim make it look nice so that's gonna be the cliffs next we're gonna go to the tree textures tree textures work the same as every other texture. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start painting some trees in, making sure I'm on white. And there you go. Now we have some foliage. What I recommend you do is you flip over to a different brush. Uh, maybe something like this is pretty good. So there you have it. Makes it look definitely more like um, tree textures. So now here we're at 100% opacity. What you could do is turn that down to something like 20. And you can see now when you paint it's a lot more like scrubland so this could be some way to represent light foliage or high grass something that can block visibility but that doesn't necessarily give the cover of trees it's going to be important to add diversity to your maps and you want to show out key locations so let's say for example I want this to be a, a little wooded island here if you think that looks a little bit too textured what you can do is change the flow down to something lower um, which makes the brush not as continuous makes for a little bit more natural feel. So there you go, you have a wooded area here. I'm going to add some more wood uh, and scruff, change up the brush a little bit. And now we have an area in the center that has a lot of trees. Maybe I want, you know, trees that are um, in low lying water. Um, you could do a lot of cool stuff with this. So there you have it. That's your introduction to how this works. Then finally, you have layers up here, which is going to be where you want your deployments to be blue and red. And then finally, I have a selection of buildings in here. The star is supposed to be a capture point. You can select these, um, move them around. So maybe I want the capture point to be in the middle of this island. Um, these various towers here, I also included tower ranges. So in case you want to make these towers that can attack people, modify what your intention is for the range. So that tower there might be meant to cover this area. Um, of the of the of the swampy marshland. But anyways, this is just an example of how it works. I want to show you some examples of what I've created. So let's go ahead and start this with Crossroads. So Crossroads um, is intended to be a, an idea, and this is something I want other people to create. I don't necessarily have the capacity to create it myself, but it's a it's supposed to be a scenario where Red Team is a, trying to take this capture point. Um, but it's not going to be necessarily a traditional defense. And what I wanted to do with this map is promote movement. And I wanted to promote the movement of the defender. The way I'm going to do this is basically the defender here wants to defend 
obviously this capture point. They're going to have some nice locations here, you know, position some archers here and here. And then you can kind of, you could defend from that position. The problem is there is this cliff that overlooks your position. So if the uh, attacker comes up here, grabs this, then he can immediately start showering your positions um, and destroying you, making an easy way to grab that position. So what I wanted to do is the defender therefore is forced to come up and start making a defense, um, you know, in an advanced position. Um, they have a watchtower here uh, and perhaps even that fires arrows to help them defend that. Now now that they're in this position they have good control of the forest it's going to be a pretty good position. The What I decided to do to counter, counterbalance that is the attacker can then move to these two cliffs. So from the cliffs they can overlook and start putting pressure on this. So the importance of this map and all my maps is there's a move and a counter move for every position. So you know if the defender wants to move out here then they're going to be suppressed so maybe they want to push all the way to here and this forces the defender to be more active so let's say um, you know the fight isn't it's going to be you know a stalemate as both sides kind of hold out here and here well then I wanted to promote movement around the flanks you'll notice that there are these hills with forced and what is that what that's going to do is it's going to allow the attacker here to move unseen behind here um, briefly come into vision and then then scoot back into the force again using these cliffs to hide him so the defender you know the attacker could have a, a a posturing position here and then go for a quick flank and get behind this formation again to block that what i decided to do is put these watchtowers on either side to defend that but again you know as the the attacker you want to take out those positions so you have an ideal location on this open area here where you can start firing upon that watchtower safely take it out and then you know make a, a push for this location and start moving out here um, what the 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 defender can do is then move here start positioning some forces here he'll also have some forces here and the same thing can go on the other side so all of a sudden you see a non camping strategy that is more favored than the decamping strategy so this is something i want to see people build interesting map all around Let's go ahead and go to the next one, which is going to be Archipelago. Archipelago has two starting points on either side. This one is very, very interesting. It's supposed to bring, um, it plays a lot on visibility and movement, and especially ships. So I'm going to describe how it does that. Well, first thing you can see straight off on the deployment, there is going to be this central area right through here that blocks vision. So you can't tell what your opponent is doing, and you're left with two decisions. Do I go right or do I go left? And all the while, you're going to have a hill blocking your vision you're gonna have forest blocking your vision so you're gonna be operating in the dark so I wanted this to be all about caution now even though you're cautious what you might do is you might you know sit with a bunch of forces here and kinda of wait for the opponent to make a move however if you wait too long what they could do is make a quick dash cut you off and then they could seize this position you'll notice that this position has forced they get vision and they can now position archers and start shooting your guys so there's no way from uh, blue side to reach this it is blocked by the water so that means in order to defend yourself you're gonna have to go as blue team and quickly move out to this position however in doing so you're gonna you know risk uh, and threaten your flank to counter assault so this is the dynamic that I wanted here um, really cautious play about seizing the initiative and all that now on the left side same thing is going on you have this um, uh, position here that means people are going to move here but be cautious about what's on the other side so I imagine there's going to be an accumulation of troops on both sides so what you're going to do is you're going to try and push around the flank on both sides because take a look at this if you control the island you control the woods and from those woods you then get vision and you have a commanding view to counteract um, whatever is you know uh, get archers in this position and you can decimate anything that's being pulled up here so those are the dynamics that I wanted there um, and so you know a little bit of map movement to uh, to go all the way around here if forces are just sitting here and they don't have vision red team could easily scoot around behind them so what this map is intended to be um, is a lot of almost chess moves here and there countering position so all the while that that's going on you know we have an accum you have a fight for this position a fight for this position um, but what is additionally important about this is look at all the ocean around you navies are intended to play a big um, 
position in this because let's say for example you lose um, let's say blue team has um, gone ahead and seized red team's location here red team is then forced to pull back but if red team has a navy what they can do is park their navy right through here and start threatening that so the navy has a lot to do with preventing opponents from making moves um, the naval engagements themselves if both sides decide to bring a fleet well then there is a nice play area for them to fight in this archipelago you know position your catapults here melee units to uh, melee ships to to block those key areas and then you can play within these shoals um, and do a lot of stuff blocking vision behind those shoals same thing over uh, on the left side you can do these beach landings all along these positions so bringing in the navies as you've never seen it before I think this is something that's extremely crucial and of course it's a sub symmetrical map so I think this brings a lot in terms of play uh, let's go on to the next one peninsula by far my favorite so this one is supposed to be again an attack and defend extremely interesting so let's go over this so there's gonna be a capture point over in the center here by uh, blue team and two watchtowers that guard this choke point so what blue team probably wants to do is move up into these positions you know and try and hold this what red team is then gonna do is they're gonna use these woods to start suppressing you know put their archers in there and start you know killing anything that's through here allow their troops to move up and what they want to do is seize these two forests on either side of the watchtowers that'll allow them to then you know move in and crush the defenders there so I gave the uh, attackers you know this is objective one then objective two is seize the woods objective three is seize the watchtower so there's very key objectives seen in front of you for um, pushing forward a cool thing about this as well is let's say the defenders are are holding this up very very well and the attackers are not able to to push past this well what they can do actually is if they brought some ships there's a bay here where they can position position their ships start getting fire start embarking you know maybe even go for a ninja cap right through here and force the defenders to react if the defenders react the attackers can then move in so ships playing a crucial role in through here you'll notice as well that the defenders um, can send their own ships around here to try and defend but look at how long that path is the attackers are going to be able to seize this bay with their ships quicker and then perhaps position some ships to block that position so um, you know definitely using ships on either side another thing you can do with your ships is um, bring ships in here have a little d-day or bring ships all the way into the back and have a d-day around the rear so you start to get you know a complete envelopment of the defenders here which will make for a very very interesting play the defender himself will probably want to seize the high ground up here this gives them a dominating view to shut down what's going on on the beaches here they can overlook these positions but I made sure that those hills are far enough away that if they decide to pull back to that position attackers can move right through the center so this is going to be extremely dynamic a very interesting attack and defend I think the bottleneck here is going to make for um, different strategies you decide to put a bunch of pikes through here as a defender and then invest the rest of your forces in fleets to do naval actions do you have just one or two archers do you want um, you know catapults position in the back here to just suppress cover you know maybe uh, something you can do as the defender is have a bunch of catapult batteries here and what those guys can do is just shut down any naval naval movement here and then they can start to suppress this position and maybe you want to go with just a bunch of hidden cavalry here so that when the defender starts to the attacker moves over there then you can unleash your cavalry from within those woods so a lot of cool stuff that can happen with these maps and this is just a sliver of what I anticipate people will be able to do with the maps themselves anyways I just wanted to share this tool with you there's a lot to it um, and I am not going to build these maps myself. I don't claim ownership of them. I really hope that people take what I've created here, make their own maps, and really hope this inspires them. Anyways, that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.